as you can see in, in this example, there are some water correlated patterns that are evolving quickly around these uh, slowly moving trends. So as you can see, I have plot the trend as well, where I can see the trend is kind of like straight. And then in the end, in the last half of the year, I can see the trend has really, really gone up where obviously we are getting more sales orders. Plus there are some seasonal fluctuations as well. So this is what we kind of like look at as factors to actually first see what the data kind of like represents. So what I'm doing is first I'm looking at the length of my data set and within that data set that I'm multiplying by 0.8 because I want to look at 80% of the data and I'm doing math.seal which is I'm just rounding up that value. So next what I'm doing is I'm scaling the data. I'm using a min-max scaler from SQLearn to scale it. So first I'm going to create my training set and that training set is all the scale values from index 0 to uh, the training set of length which is again the length in this is 699 which is the length for the 80% of the data. So I'm basically bringing all of the columns. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to split the data and that for that I'll be naming that list as X train and Y train. So I'm going to create a loop for I in range uh, 25 and length of the training set, which is the training set, which is 699 rows. So what I'm trying to do is I'm looping through 25 values each time. And in this looping values, what I'm trying to do is I'm appending in an X train and where what I want to do is the I should be I minus 25, which is looking at the 25 values. And then it's uh, the actual zero. And then where Y train would be the 26th value, which is the I by zero. So which means I am I'm bring, building the arrays from one to 25 and then 26th value is the, the Y train, which is what I'm trying to predict. So that's my target where So X, where X train becomes all my features and then the Y train becomes the value that I want to predict. Perfect, so now I'm going to convert my X train and Y train in NumPy array. Because again, like when you're building your RNN model, the ex like RNN model expects your values to come into a three-dimensional array format, not two-dimensional. At the moment, my data is two-dimensional. So it will be three-dimensional in terms of number of samples, number of uh, time step. So which is in this case, I'm looking back 25 days and number of features, which is for me, it's one because uh, I'm, only, I'm only predicting the total amount of sales. Perfect, so I've created a model which is equal to sequential and then what I'm trying to do now is I'm adding more layers on top of that and then first I've added one layer which is again the units is equal to 50 because it has 50 neurons and then I have return sequence equal to true because there will be more layers that will be stacked onto this layer and the input shape is equal to x, shape, x train uh, dot shape one which is the number of steps which is 25 in this case then I'm also adding a dropout between each layer which is again 20 percent so then I'm going to add a dense layer and then within the dense layer it's a it's a regular dense layer and I'm applying a uh, units equal to one I'm only applying one neuron on it so this is my model architecture finally I'm going to set my optimizer and my loss function in this I'm applying optimizer which is the atom optimizer and then I'm applying the loss function in this which is mean squared error so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit the model in this fitting the model what I'm doing is epox is equal to 50 this is the number of times I want to iterate okay so I'm now going to fit the model again in this I'm uh, using the epox is 50 which is again I'm iterating through the neural network 50 times backward and forward uh, which is again backward propagation forward propagation and then the batch size is 10 which is again in this case uh, this is what I am using the total number of samples that will be used in each iteration okay then finally I just left the verb was equal to zero because again I don't want to see any training happening within my file so if you want to see that you can just see equal to one that will start showing the training on the bottom of this <laughs> I 
Again, in a similar format, I'm creating my test data set, which is the 20% of the data, and I'm going to reshape that data into three-dimensional uh, format as well, because again, the LSTM model is expecting the values to be in three-dimensional. Okay, so finally, the model is trained and I have predicted my test values. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build a plotly graph where I want to see the actual observations, and then for the test set, I want to see my actual values, and then the actual predictions that the model have predicted. Okay, so as you can see within this, uh, the, the, my actual observations are in blue and then my green is the actual values and then the, or, the orange color is predictions, which kind of like shows that the model is performing really good. Again, as you can see, like the, the, the model itself is really powerful because I haven't applied any techniques like uh, hyperparameter tuning or actually maybe doing more feature engineering or maybe doing something like multivariate analysis. This is just predicting based on single value. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fit the model and I try to see, okay, what are the predictions and what predictions were close to the actual. Now, once I have done that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to predict the future values. Because again, as you can see in this scenario, we had our observations, we had our test data, and then on that test data, I created the predictions and I have seen the model is predicting good or not. Again, you can calculate also our messy scores and stuff like that to see how accurate your model is. But what I want to do now is I want to create a function which I can actually pass my values that how many number of observations I want to predict in future. So in this case, I will be predicting the next 25 days, what the sales will look like and what would be the exact numbers for that. So I'll be using Plotly again. What I'm doing with this is I'm actually having different trays. So now I have a three different trays that I'll be actually putting onto my figure. So initially first I have a go.getter, which is again my date and the actual values uh, for my training data set. And also I'm passing, it's, it's in a line format because again, if you see the mode is lines and then I'm passing a dictionary, which is my color and the width of that line. Similar way, I have created two more trays, one for the test data set, which is the actual test, the 20% of the data. And then the prediction of that 20% of the data is in the trace three. So I've created these three traces and that's my data, which is the list of three trays. Then the layout will be the, uh, in the layout itself, I have my X axis and Y axis, the names of the titles, and then the actual title of the plot. And then finally, what I'm doing is go dot figure, which data is equal to the list, which is my three trace. And the layout is equal to layout, which is the actual format that I'm going to set on the graph. Then finally, what I do is figure dot show to actually see the graph. <music> Okay, so I've created the function which actually predicts the next 25 days what sales will be there. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm creating a similar graph, but in this scenario I'll add another trace on my previous graph. So what I'm going to do in that trace is I'm actually going to look at all my future values. So in this case, the next 25 days, what the sales look like, and I will be plotting that onto the same graph. So within prediction function, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, look at the last 25 values and predict the 26th value. And in the similar way, I'll be looping through all of these to actually predict for next 25 values. So once I do the predictions again in this, within this I've also scaled the data and scaled inverse once the predictions are coming out of that. And then once I have my final prediction, then I append that prediction in back into the list and then I look at the last 25 values again and then predict the next one. Similar way I'll be trading it through 25 times to actually look at the next 25 days what the prediction looks like for sale. So within the prediction date, what I'm trying to do is I'm bringing out all the last 25 dates so I can actually use that into the Plotly graph.
So as you can see on the graph itself, I have all my observations in blue and the green is all the observation of test data set where I have in my slight red color, it's all the predictions. And then the orange color is basically showing all the forecast. So forecast, which is for the future, next 25 days, how the sales will look like. Now again, this would be really powerful analysis to show to your manager what sales looks like in the next 25 days and showing this prediction. So as you can see in this model, I haven't done any feature engineering or parameter tuning at all. I'm just literally creating an architecture of LSTM model and then I'm basically predicting what sales would look like for the next 25 days and as you can see it does a really good job according to me again if you are doing it more in a robust manner what you can do is you can do more parameter tuning on this maybe trying to apply different algorithms like XT boost random forest and also flying Arnan and then comparing the models together and see which models are performing better on your data set and initially also you can what you can do is you can do better feature engineering to actually include more features in your model again more data you have, more features you have, and more relevant patterns you have, it would be more easier for the model to predict the actual values. Okay, so my whole analysis is complete, but again, in the end, what I'm coming back to is, I have my analysis there, but if I want to send this analysis to, say for example, to the store manager, or to somebody else, I don't really want to show the code in my Jupyter Notebook, I'm going to actually show you one basic example, how you can actually hide the code in your Jupyter Notebook. <music> So for this I'm going to import IPython display library in which I'm going to be uh, including the HTML module and then in this what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to hide all the code. I'll be creating a button that if I click on that button all the code is hided so it will be just a PDF report if I'm sending it out to somebody else which makes it a lot cleaner if you're sharing this report with somebody else. Now again if you might be sharing this with some other people who actually understand the code it would be good to maybe share it with them in the, that format. Alright so I've finished coding for the button again in this button what I've done is I've created a new function what it does is if you press the button it basically hides all the input uh, code uh, snippets so what it happens is like when you click on it it basically hide all the values and if you click back on it again it shows all the values again so this function is now completed again if you press on the button all the code will be hidden as you can see now all the analysis it just sits on its own there's no code visible but again if you do not want to include this you can just hide this part of the code and if you want if you're sharing with somebody else who actually understands the code and you do want to share the code you can leave it hidden as well I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Again, I'll be building more different types of models and different analysis and uh, do subscribe to my channel and click on that bell sign if I'm putting more videos on, you'll actually get notification for that.